It's the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Southwest University. I'm Adrian Ochoa, joined by Rachel Phillips. Week three of the high school football season, Rachel, and uh, let's just say three weeks in, I have to say uh, Blitzy has like surpassed us all. Star of the show, oh, easily. Hands down. People don't come up and say hi to me. They're like, where's Blitzy? Can I, can I get a photo with Blitzy? I'm like, all right. Sure, Same. Yeah. Everybody's asking for Blitzy. I never have him. So we'll, like, we'll give him like, to you one week. Maybe, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I steal him. Maybe on a Thursday game or something. But uh, big time matchups this week as district play now under, underway in 16A. But our game of the week going to take us to South Central El Paso. Taking a look here at our starting lineup. It was a battle of the unbeatens tonight as Jefferson playing host to Riverside. Both teams 2-0 and to start the season. So who would make it 3-0? and We'll then turn our focus to a big time game in District 16A. The Eastwood Troopers are looking to score their first win in district play against an undefeated Pebble Hills team. And then later, it's on to Los Cruces. The Centennial Hawks taking on Mayfield. Both teams looking to bounce back after suffering their first loss of the season one week ago. We'll go ahead and start with a 5A versus 4A matchup. Jefferson and Riverside, both teams off to strong starts this season. 2-0, and both teams looking to keep their win streak intact. It's tonight's game of the week. As we go to La Jeff, Riverside High, powered offense, averaging more than 50 points a game. Jefferson up 7-0 in the first quarter, but Riverside speedy Angel Munoz, the sweet play of the week and winner. And Skippy, you missed it. There Come you on. go, and Skippy. We'll get to that later, but the puts the Rangers on the board there. It's 7-6, Jefferson with the one-point lead, but Riverside's Ian Munchen going to make a big pass here to Jose Gordado. 14-7, Riverside in front. And you see here the people waving at the patients at the children's hospital called the wave of love. We love to see that. Riverside's Angel Munoz you know, thought it was a block right there, thought the ball was batted down. He gets knocked in, but take a look what happened. No, the play continues. It was a, it was a catch. That's Tristan Munoz taking it to the house. It's 21 to 7 Riverside at the half. Nice moonshot by our photographer, Jerry Nada. In the third quarter, though, Jefferson down 21 to 14, looking to tie things up, but the quarterback gets picked off by Munoz. Speedy Munoz, he does it all. Truly. And he does have to leave the game. This it looks like he cramped up a bit right there. He would be back later, and I'll show you that play in just a bit, but they would continue on without, without him as the Rangers cash in on that interception. Hand off to Adrian Estrada count it right there it's 28 to 14 Riverside then another big defensive play by the Rangers Vincent set it up just strips it away takes it away and we are gone and look who's Whoa. right look who's right with him speedy <laughs> yeah. holding hands right there down Wait the a minute, honey, let's go mate let's, I got you exactly as they go into the end zone Riverside getting all the love right now as they're three and oh the Rangers win it 42 to 14, the final. Let's go ahead and hear from those victorious Rangers. You know what? I'll tell you what. Credit to Coach Martinez, his, his boys. Hey, those guys played their tails off, man. And hats off to to Jeff. They played they played lights out tonight. We just found it. We found it in the running game, and we had our, our guys started making plays and started making the key stops on defense. And that's what that's what happened tonight. Um, well, every week, every week we want to go one and zero. So we're going to prepare for it like we do any other team. It's just another team that we're going to play. And our goal is just to go one and zero for that week. I guess that's what happened. You put on that kangaroo costume, yeah. you, you come out and play like that. I want to see him in the kangaroo costume again. I mean, it's, it's so good. We're going to show it later in the oh, show. Okay, we have good. it just in yeah, case you missed it. In case you missed it, it you'll get yeah. to watch it again. They look dangerous, the Rangers. Yes, very good. We'll see how they go throughout the rest of the season. But with just two non-district games under their belts, it was already time for the start of district play in 1-6A. Earlier this afternoon, it was the Eastwood Troopers, your team, mm. taking on the yes. undefeated Pebble Hill Spartans. Trooper clap. Come on, Adrian. Yeah, We're I going to the sack first quarter. Eastwood quarterback, Evan Minahedas, with the keeper touchdown. But the Spartans, well... I feel like they kind of want to answer right back, right? That's what you want to do. Yeah. Pebble Hills QB with his own quarterback keeper, Gail Ochoa. That one to tie things up. Pebble Hills Ochoa pass to Marcus Torres. And that is another touchdown for the Pebble Hills Spartans. They were up 21 to 7 at the half. Then in the second, it's good defense here by the Spartans. Minheaders gets picked off by Amari Welch. They mark him down at yeah, he's going to take it yeah. all the way. Yeah, interception. Try it, looking for the touchdown, but he falls, comes up just short. There. What does he get in? Nope. It looks like he's in. He, they marked him down short. Oh, wow, so that's then, rough. Yep, Jacob Ledesma with the rushing touchdown right after. And then check out what happens on the extra point attempt. It's a loose pigskin. Eastwood's Curtis Murillo picks it up and takes it all the way back for two. 
points. Yep, all of that for two points. Goes down to two point conversion there at that point. Yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> any points are points you want. But this game belonged to the Spartans. Ochoa pass to Sam Chacon. That is a Pebble Hills touchdown right here. Bouncing on the sideline, but he gets on in. And then Pebble Hills again. The handoff to Jacob Ledesma. Toss. Nice trick play right to there. Jose Ruiz, and it is another Pebble Hills touchdown. Tough loss for the Eastwood Troopers in their first uh, 1-6A district play game. Pebble Hills getting their first win in district play and improved to 3-0 on the season. Final score 40-22 and making a lot of noise they are, the Pebble Hills Spartans. Let's hear from those Spartans now. Uh, I think we showed a lot of uh, resolve. We had some guys down that didn't start the game with us. We had another really great player in the first series of the game go down with an injury in Brandon Cardenas. And these kids just stepped up. I mean, they stepped up. Eastwood is a great team, great offense, very well coached. They play hard. They're going to play hard for 48 minutes. And uh, I'm glad our kids were able to step up and finish the game. You know, it's just like every week, uh, you know, preparation and, you know, domination is always our number one goal. Um, you know, I think we did that. You know, we had a couple slips up, slip ups tonight. Uh, but, you know, overall, just domination. You know, it's always on the, in the back of our head, and that's our Mango. Keyword of the day, domination, and that's exactly what they did in my troop. But good, good showing by the Spartans. You gotta take away the clap. I don't know how you how you do it, but yeah. no clap tonight. No clap tonight, but it's okay. The trooper will bounce back, but Julio Lopez will have him has him on the right track here. Well, it's been a rough start for the Andrews Eagles, though, still in search of their first win of the season. A tough challenge for them tonight as they took on Del Valle, the Conquistadores, looking to bounce back after falling to those Pebble Hill Spartans last week. I think so, everyone's forward to the Pebble Hill Spartans. How's yeah, going? Three and zero for a reason. Andrews with the home field advantage in this one. Third quarter, it's all Conquistadores here. First play, quarterback Jesse Ramos takes off. He's going to run it 60 yards for the house call. He pointed at the camera, yeah. too. He knew it. He's he like, knew. yep, he touchdown, knew. let's go. Or David Moreno was there for that one. He pointed at, pointing him out there. 27, 24 to 7, Del Valle at this point. After a three and out here, Del Valle's Juan Archuleta. Going to run 50 yards, practically untouched here. Juan Archuleta, welcome to End Zone City. There. It's 30 to 7. Conquistadores, Del Valle, though, wasn't quite done yet. Again, with a three and out. From Andres Jesse Ramos, as you'll see here in a bit. Yep, shot of the scoreboard there, showing it 30 to 7. Three now hard here from Andres Jesse Ramos connects with Eli Molina for a 45 yard touchdown. Then in the third quarter, Alda Valle oh, again, no spiral. defense from the Eagles there, as it's 37 to 7, Del Valle at that point. All Conquistadores, final score in this one. Del Valle wins big, 44 to 13, as Andrus now 0 and 3 to start the season. Meantime for Del Valle, they improve to 2 and 1 on the season. Another team in search of their first win are the Burgess Mustangs. They paid a visit to Northeast El Paso to take on the Parkland Matadors. <laughs> hey, Grandma! I hope you're up late watching tonight because your grandson he was on TV. Hopefully making you smile on this full moon Friday football night. Someone I know who is smiling is Matador head coach Leigh McWhorter, whose team was up 21 to nothing at the start of the third after coming off their first win of the season last week against Austin. But that smile quickly disappearing Burgess defense, forcing the Matadors to punt from well within their half, which sets them up for their first score of the game. QB Andrew Rutledge with the pass to Devin Mata. Cheers all round for the Burgess Mustangs. They're happy and look, keep those cheers going because Mustangs defense came to play in the third. Caden Evans this time with the sack on Matador QB, Evan Ortiz. It looked like a real momentum swing, but Parkland Saints, who can play at that game, they return serve with a sack of their own, Ooh. which sets up the Matador offense to run it on in through Isaiah Beasley. That would be the final score of the game to give Parkland a 27-7 win and their second win under new head coach, Leigh McWhorter. You get a sombrero like that. It's nice. Well, that's why yeah. I was initially taking the show. I was like, look at this sombrero. It's a party down yeah. here. And then they were like, my grandma watches ABC7. I was like, well, come on. So should every grandma out there. There you go. Yeah, my grandma watches it too. Just, by, just, just thought I'd throw that in there. Well, turning to New Mexico. Last week, Centennial was the number one ranked team in the land of enchantment, but... A loss to La Cueva last week moved them down to the number three spot this week. They were back in Cruces tonight, taking on fellow city rival, the Mayfield Trojans. The Hawks have never lost to the Trojans in their short history. And check out who was at tonight's game. Take a look. Go Aggies. Oh. Yeah, 
Of course. The Jer man, the meet the legend. Jerry Kill, head coach at NMSU. His Aggies, of course, face UTEP tomorrow in the Sun Bowl. Kill's taking in a high school game tonight between the Hawks and Trojans. Perhaps Kill was interested in watching this guy right here, Makai Gutierrez. Take a look at this. Centennial's first offensive play of the game, and Gutierrez just races right through the Trojan defense for 45-yard house call there. The Hawks jump on top, 7-0. Second Hawk possession, though. Quarterback Daniel Hernandez fakes one direction and goes another looking for Azeas Aguilar for the 14-yard touchdown. It's 14 to nothing, Centennial. Then on their third possession, what do you think is going to happen here? Centennial can't do anything wrong. Hernandez looks long and finds Isaiah Avieta, who outsmarts the Trojan defender for the 33-yard score there. 21 to nothing, Hawks, and still in the first quarter. It's Gutierrez here taking the snap and watch the speedster go around the Trojan defense from 18 yards out. This game was over early, leading 28 to nothing after just the first quarter. It was 49 to 6 at the half. Centennial wins its third game of the year. Final score tonight. Let's go ahead and take it there. You see it, 49 to 13. Centennial back in the win column. They get the dub. And Kill probably looking at a couple guys on that team yeah. after all that action. I, I, he might be taking some of it. A lot of yeah. talent there on Centennial, that is for sure. Plenty more to come on the Borderland Blitz. We're just getting started. When we come back, we're going to introduce Jason McNabb. He'll be with us. He was out at the El Dorado East Lake game tonight. And then we'll head to Austin High School where the Panthers played host to the Canyon Theater. Eagles. Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel any time, and get moving. Go cardio crazy in our clean and spacious clubs. Jam out on the strength machines and get down with some dumbbells. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel any time. Deal ends Wednesday, September 14th. New Mexico deserves better than extremist politicians who take orders from party leaders instead of us. So I'm running for Congress to fix it. I was raised by a single mother, built a small business, and served on the Las Cruces City Council. My name is Gabe Vasquez, and to protect a woman's right to choose, lower costs for families, and give New Mexico what it deserves, I'll stand up to any party leader. That's why I approve this message. Every story has meaning. The top story's been updated. Great. Focus, commitment, determination, these aren't just words. It's a promise. Andres, how are the roads? Looking good and green. Every detail matters. Beautiful morning. It is, but there's a change in the weather models. I'll be issuing a first alert. Start your day the right way. Experience you can count on. Information you can trust. Going three, two, one. Rise and shine, El Paso. I'm Hillary Florin. And I'm Saul Sainz. Awesome stuff there, the, the Coronado marching band, right? You were out at that. Yeah, yeah, performing in front of the Sun Bowl. That's a pretty yeah. cool opportunity for some high school kids. Absolutely. Well, let's go ahead and move on here. There was another big game in District 16A, Al Dorado at 2-0, taking on Eastlake over at the SAG. Jason McNabb was out at that game tonight. He's got the highlights for us. What's going on, Jason? Yeah, well, Adrian, early on this game, it was a bit of a defensive slugfest. Eastlake had a few drives fizzle, leading to three and outs. Let's hold on, let's, let's roll the, uh, the video here. There we go. They had, they had some three and outs, including this missed sideline catch by wide receiver Isaiah Rodriguez. But the Falcons did put the first points on the board with a field goal. Right here, there we go. It's in through the uprights. Now, El Dorado looks to strike back with this nice third down run from quarterback Quincy Estrada. And now it's fourth down, El Dorado's offense stays on the field and Estrada is nearly picked by Caleb Emery, the defensive end. Now this leads to two more touchdowns from Eastlake before the end of the first half, including this QB sneak by Luke Lamelli and this pass to Isaiah Perea right here. There you go. Final score, 24-10 with Eastlake taking the dub tonight. Now we head into Bowie and Asleta. First off, look at that sunset. 
Isleta is looking to stay undefeated right under that sunset right there. And their offense really showed tonight. The first play from scrimmage, Evan Martinez dumps it off to receiver Daniel Martinez. And look at that, he almost takes it all the way, all the way to 10. Yes, now the Indians quickly score with this run from Aerith Gomez. Bowie tries to strike back after a timeout right before fourth down. There's that timeout right there. And Gael Varea heaves it into the end zone, but oh, it's dropped. Final score, 49-26, Isleta. Yeah, Isleta gets their first win of the season. Not then, bad, you'll take it, hey. Congratulations to those Indians. Well, thank you very much, Jason. We'll check back in with you for the Blitz picks coming up. Well, our next game featured two running backs who will be playing on Saturdays next year. LJ Martin of Canyotillo, he's committed to Stanford, and Jaden Wilson of Austin, he's headed to New Mexico. It was Eagles versus Austin, Panthers. Zero. Pick things up here in the second half where it's scoreless, but Eagles quarterback Jeremiah Knox gives it to who else? Mr. Martin. Gonna run it here, just taking defenders <laughs> down. Just get out of that man's way. The, the, future, the future Cardinal there. Insane. Yeah, and you look, look, look at the post right there. It's like, was there ever, ever any doubt? Yeah. It's seven to nothing, Eagles. Austin couldn't get nothing going. Several three and outs, plus a couple of four and outs as well. They would attempt some fourth down. Um, they would go for a fourth down, wouldn't convert on those. But back to the Eagles once. Uh, well, here we go right here. There's Jaden Wilson. He's, again, the Eagles defense was just swarming all over him. Nothing doing in the first half for Mr. Wilson here. As you see again, just He's trying, yeah. but yeah, counting to your defense. Good. Ooh, also a nice Another shot. nice shot from our photographer, Jason Moreno. But back to the Eagles here. Once again, Knox gives it to Martin again. And what do you think is going to happen? Another 43-yard scamper. To the, for the touchdown, 14 to nothing. All Eagles were up 14 to nothing at the half, and the Eagles again holding Wilson in check as Daniel Theo blanks the Austin Panthers tonight, 35 to nothing. Yeah, yeah big statement. After going down to Pebble Hills in Week One, yeah. they're, they're coming back. Well, winless Urban traveling to take on a one-on-one -on -one Hanks, and you know it's bizarre to me for how aware football players have to be on the field that they nearly run me over every time. A kid literally hurdled me today. I felt my hair move, but it's okay. I live to tell the tale. How about the fairy tale of the almighty Knights whose crown, turn, whose crown turned out on homecoming night? First quarter, Marcus Porter's with the handoff to Xavier Johnson, who runs it in for the score, a king on the field and off of it because that's the homecoming king right there for the Knights. How do you reckon that works for the Knights? Do, do you get knighted or, or not? Maybe uh, not because he's got the not? sword. He's got the sword, but maybe, maybe you do get knighted. Yeah, yeah. banana man just as but the perplexed banana. as me. Yeah. Uh, Mate, no team's mascot is a banana. I think you're at the wrong game. Urban able to hit right back, though, on their first drive of the game with the pass to Jonathan Chiders. He's rocking it like a baby. Trying to put him to sleep with a different type of fairy tale. But beware of the king because Xavier Johnson goes in again for the Knights here. And look at the swag after this touchdown. Yeah, he knows he's good. And so were the Knights tonight. They won it 17 Jeez. to 21. Yes, you heard me right. 7-0 to 21 over Urban. The basketball score there. Well, let's go ahead and check out some more scores here. Bel Air, they were up in Chaparral tonight, and Bel Air improves to 3-0 on the season as they blank Chaparral tonight, 53-0. Meantime, the El Paso Tigers looking to continue their winning ways. They were 2-0 entering tonight. Now they're 3-0 as they took down the San Ali Eagles, 45-14 the final. Well, it has come to that part of the show. It is the war of the week and a good one of course with the west side bowl why not Franklin yeah. coronado exactly we want to introduce one of our new team members he's one of our interns lorenzo Lever had uh, this war of the week he hosts it for us that's right y'all it's time for the war of the week we're here at the beautiful stumpful stadium on the campus of utep where on saturday night the utep miners and nmsu aggies will battle and the battle of i-10 but tonight it's all about the west side i'm here with the coronado thunderbirds Woo! and the franklin cougars Woo! all righty guys are you guys ready to start the war of the week all righty here we go in three two one go and the franklin cougars take an early lead they're still they're still going on. They're almost there. Look, come on, Coronado, you guys can take it. And Franklin takes the win. Congratulations to the Franklin Cougars. You guys are the winners of this, year, this week's War of the Week. 
win in War of the Week and then also yeah. win in the game. So Double win. Nice. And i got to mention, I forgot to say it after the Hanks game, I'm 3-0 and in Rachel's Rally. Rachel's <laughs> Rally. That's tr that's right. Hanks again with the win. Wow. There I you go. I had someone come up to me and say, so we're going to win tonight because you're here. And I was like, ooh, okay, this is a lot of pressure. It's a lot but of pressure now on those votes moving forward. <laughs> Still more highlights to get to after the break. We'll take you to Clint High School where the Lions were looking to pick up their second win of the season as they took on the Gazden Panthers. Meantime, the Anthony Wildcats, could they remain undefeated against in their game against the Bears from Hatch Valley? And as we here, we want to give a massive shout out to Jose Hernandez, who I met at the Coronado Franklin game. If we can bring this photo up just to show you uh, my guy, Jose. It's coming up. There, there we go. It's really more of a shout out to his wife, Alyssa, uh, trying to get my guy Jose some brownie points here. The pair have been married for wow. 35 years. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, yeah, Alyssa's been volunteering at the El Paso Children's Hospital for the past nine awesome. years. These two were high school sweethearts, and uh, his wife was over the other side cool. of the stadium, and so he said, can we get a photo? I said, heck yeah, and uh, there you go, Jose. I hope you get the brownie points, my guy. Hopefully you get taken out on a nice day or something to celebrate. I don't awesome. know, but thanks yeah. for watching. We appreciate you all. We'll be right back. I'm a 25-year truck driver. I've been driving for Arrivas Enterprises for six. I have a million miles. I'm home every weekend. The benefits and the respect that you get in this company is outstanding. If you're looking for a place to call home, call Arrivas Enterprises. Here in the Sun City, we can ensure our children benefit from an education that inspires success, cultivates imagination, and promotes critical thinking. And it starts by saying yes to Sun City school districts. Our districts only hire state-certified educators, provide free universal pre-K, and offer a range of STEM and STEAM courses, as well as early college and dual credit opportunities. A brighter future for our children is possible, so say yes to Sun City school districts. The tastiest handcrafted pizza made with the freshest ingredients. The newest games, along with some cool classics. The post-game party, win or lose. They're all made to be shared, like our double-up deal. Two large one-topping pizzas on dough made from scratch daily, just $24. Peter Piper Pizza, pizza made fresh, families made happy. I'm a 25-year truck driver. I've been driving for Arrivas Enterprises for six. I have a million miles. I'm home every weekend. The benefits and the respect that you get in this company is outstanding. If you're looking for a place to call home, call Arrivas Enterprises. Welcome back to the Borderland Blitz. The Clint Lions were looking to keep the momentum going and make it back-to-back -back wins as they face the Gadsden Panthers tonight. Gadsden on three to start the season. Second half, Clint QB, Fabian Bustamante, tossed to Kevin Cuesta for the TD. And yeah, they're, they're happy about it. Gadsden QB, Thomas Herrera, with the keeper of his own, skirting around the outside. Just getting in in the nick of time. Clint QB, the toss. But uh, intercepted oh, Ryan Hernandez for Gadsden. Will he get there? Taking it all the way. Yes, he does. That brings up the final score 21 to 12. The Gadsden Panthers over the Clint Lions. Fabens taking on Cathedral. Well, no, we actually, this is actually Anthony highlights right here. We'll go ahead and go with that. Fab, uh, Anthony taking on Hatch Valley. Kind of got our videos flipped there, but as you see, Anthony. Nice move right there by number 24. Nice completion. Yeah, taken down, but set up well for this next play here. That's in for the score. Yeah, touchdown Wildcats. But in the end here, well, we're showing the final score for the Fabens game. As you see, Fabens with a, with a win over Cathedral, 12 to seven. If we can pull up the Anthony score and see, I believe Hatch Valley ended up winning that game. It was a close one. Yeah, 37 to 33 was the final Hatch Valley wins over Anthony. Well, let's head back across state lines to Rio Rancho and New Mexico. Yeah, the Oregon Mountain Knights were taking on the Rio Rancho Rams. We can go ahead and get to those highlights. There we go. Now we're in Rio Rancho. We're back on track here. The Rams getting the offense started as Dominic Valencia going to find Jace Pitt for the first down here. Then later in the drive, Valencia 
going to drop back and he's going to find his man in the end zone as the Rams oh, take the lead 7 to nothing. The Rams too much for the Oregon Mountain Knights as Rio Rancho wins this one final score 20 to 13 the final. Well, Mountain View played host to Seminole tonight. Mountain View is 2-0. and We can take that scoreboard. There you see it, Seminole. Yeah, getting up. So Mountain View go down to 2-1 and one now to start the season. And the Horizon Scorpions 0-2 are still winless on the season. They fall to Fort Stockton tonight, 31-2-3. And another score to get to, San Teresa versus Cobra. And San Teresa coming out on top, 42-2-6. Let's go ahead and send things over to Jason now for the Blitz picks. Chance to win a $50 gift, Visa gift card. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. If you didn't get any picks, well, you missed out. But Jason. Hey, guys. Once again, this is my favorite part of the show. You send us your picks. We may send you $50. Now, this week, we had some really good entries, and I want to show you some of my favorites. Now, we have this close-up right here of this player from Burgess, courtesy of Chris Bauer. Thank you, Chris. As well, uh, oh, hold on, they're loading. As well as this panorama here from the Hanks versus Irvin game. That one is courtesy of Alex Rodriguez. One last picture from that Irvin game. We're going to pull that up here for you. There we go. This is the American flag. And this is courtesy of Ray Navarro. Thank you, Ray. Now, however, there can only be one winner. And this week, drum roll, please. Let's get to the winner. Here we go. Herman Delgado wins this picture from Bowie's homecoming game. Thank you to everyone who submitted. And remember, if you didn't win this week, you have many more chances to enter. Keep those blitz picks coming. Now back to you, Adrian and Rach. Nice action shot there. Yeah, that awesome. was impressive. I'm trying yeah. to figure out, they have like a professional camera roll. <laughs> the iPhones are good nowadays, so I don't know. I got an Android, so. <laughs> I have issues with that, but we'll get to that on another day. <laughs> Blitzy, it's all about Blitzy. Let's go ahead, right? The Blitzy all around town? Yeah, is it really is Blitzy. To? This is yeah. him. He, look, he got to go all around town for this past couple of days. You see him there. The cheerleaders, they oh. wanted to take him up into the air. Look at this. Whoa, nice. I know. That's a lot, of, a lot of fun for Blitzy. He literally got to do everything. I mean, this is him at the Sun Bowl with Ava. Oh, she loved him. Go. She did a cartwheel, got to hang out with him. Franklin Frank Cougars. Cougars. He's yeah. there at homecoming Home. with the Hanks. Wow. Literally, he, he's the bear around town. The people love him. He, he got dressed out in Hanks gear, up with the student section there. <laughs> I was a little concerned at that one. I thought he was going to be a bit roughed out. Look at him. Put it's okay. I yeah. mean, they make those bears pretty tough. And then look he at this. Wow. Dancing oh, yeah. Bobby. Yeah, that's, that's right. The moves of From Charlie Clark Nissan. Yeah. I've seen him a few times. Back yeah. with some more cheerleaders, some kids. Awesome. I mean, pats on the head. Blitzy is the king of the town. Well, we're going to recap the final scores for you, just in case you missed it. We'll stay with us. Hey, El Paso. Your future is calling. It's time to imagine what's possible and dream big. We are ready to create a new path forward, helping you reach your goals and potential. Your passion is our purpose. Let's rise together. The drive is on at Casa Buick GMC. That's right. Score with a winning lineup. Check out these game-changing trucks and SUVs. Get 0% APR financing on new Buick and GMC models. Build your own Buick or GMC online and order from Casa today. Get your vehicle your way. And we'll pay you up to $1,000 over Kelly Blue Book for your trade. The drive is on at Casa Buick GMC. Home of the nice guys. Yeah! yeah. Don't wait until 2023 and enroll today at Southwest University. We offer more than 20 associates and bachelor's degrees to start your dream career now. Enroll by September 23rd at Southwest University to become a professional in the nursing, sonography, business, or radiology fields. We offer flexible schedules and short terms. Why wait until next year when you can start at Southwest University now? For more information, visit us at southwestuniversity.edu. Last day to enroll is September 23rd. Southwest University makes you happen. Hey, El Paso. Your future is calling. It's time to imagine what's possible and dream big. We are ready to create a new path forward, helping you reach your goals and potential. Your passion is our purpose. Let's rise together. Quick recap of the games from Thursday. You saw Franklin versus Coronado. West Side Bowl here. First quarter, Franklin wasting no time. Shea Smith with the pass to Bo Sparks for the touchdowns. The Cougars go up 7 0. Franklin wins the West Side Bowl. Final score in this one there you see 57 to 23. 
We go to the sack now. Another District 16A showdown. America's taking on Montwood. My buddy Anthony. He's a Montwood fan, probably a future Ram himself. And Anthony wouldn't like this play, though, because in the first quarter, the Rams try to get tricky, but it backfires in the worst possible way. Mario Hugin for the Trailblazers with the pick and the six. As America's goes up 7-3, to three, the Trailblazers win this game. Final score. It was a close one in the end, but America's gets the win 40 to 37. The final. Let's go ahead and move on to our sweet play of the week. You voted, and the Riverside Rangers taking the honor this week, right? You yeah. Were there. Angel Speedy, Skippy Munoz. Yeah. He has the speed, and he also has the hops jumping over the Burgess defender. So you give us a sweet play, and you get the cupcakes courtesy of Albertsons. You were the presentation, right? Yeah, yeah. got, got to Let's take, go ahead and show that. There it is. Got to take the cupcakes out, and, and I said, you know, Angel Speedy, Skippy Munoz, because of the jump, kangaroo. We have a famous TV show back home called Skippy right. the Bush Kangaroo. So Angel being the best sport there ever is in the world, putting on the kangaroo costume and doing a backflip, yeah, no less. Yeah, in the costume. That's tough. That's uh, tough. It was impressive. Very <laughs> cool. Congrats to Angel, and uh, love your sweet play nominees on Sunday night, yeah. 10.35, tune in, we'll have the, the highlights for you. Let's go ahead and recap the scores from week three. As you see, Pebble Hills over Eastwood, 40 to 22. Eastlake winners over El Dorado, 24 to 10. Riverside, you saw those Rangers, 42 to 14 over Jefferson. Hanks, winners over Irvin, 70 to 21. Parkland gets a dub over Burgess by 20. And Canotillo over Austin in a shutout, 35 to nil. Then you had Del Valle beating out Andres, 44 to 13. East Letter over Bowie, 49 to 26. El Paso getting the win over San Eli, 45 to 14. Bel Air shutting out Chaparral, 53 to nil. Fabens also shutting out Cathedral, 28 to nil. And Seminole over Mountain View, 16 to 21. Moving on here, Gazden over Clint, 21 to 12. Centennial winners over Mayfield, 49 to 13. Rio Rancho over Oregon Mountain, 20 to 13. Santa Teresa takes down Cobre, 21 to 6. Hatch Valley gives Anthony their first loss of the season, 37 to 33. And these games from Thursday, as you saw, Franklin over Coronado, 57 to 23. And that America's game, America's getting the dub over Montwood, 40 to 37. Well, that's going to do it for week three. Can We're done. I, they just fly by. I don't know where they go, but the, the, they, they, do. they go. A quarter of the way through the season, and uh, yeah, oh. we're having some fun. We are having we're, fun. And especially with Blitzy around town. I'm curious to see where he's going to end up next. Yeah, you might get to take him out next week. I'll be nice. I'll share. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Love that. Well, thank you very much for joining us here on the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Southwest University. That's going to wrap up week three. Well, I actually have a game tomorrow, Las Cruces, yes. in action against Cleveland. Rachel will have that tomorrow. One more game to get to, then it's on to week four. See you then. Thank you for watching. ABC7 News is now available on any of these streaming services, as well as the KVIU.